Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this very exclusive interview with the Argentinian ambassador to Algeria, Mr. Ernesto Santiago Martinez Gondra, who speaks for the first time to the Algerian media through their news cameras. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador, for accepting to be interviewed by us. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for being here uh, and welcome to the Argentine Embassy here in Algeria. Thank you so much. My first question is going to be very simple and very direct and maybe so many Algerians want to know who is Mr. Ambassador Ernesto Gondra? Well, ju I'm just uh, an official for my country. Uh, I'm a career diplomat. Uh, that's it. I mean, just... Um, and you started serving here in Algeria since 2013? Yes. Very nice. Uh, well, my uh, second question is, uh, go is going to be a general question. And how do you see or how do you qualify the Algerian-Argentinian relations corporations in general? Well, um, I won't give you um, a diplomatic reply. I will, I will give you a real reply. And the real reply is they are excellent. And then later I will explain why I consider they are excellent. In terms of what? I mean, uh, excellent, I mean, we have some economic, political, social relations. Right. Uh, I would say it's excellence in the uh, political level, in the trade level, in the cooperation level, in all levels. Um, well, uh, if, you, if you want, uh, we could talk about political level. Right. Uh, our president, she came here in 2008. Uh, last, last year, the uh, foreign minister of Argentina also paid a visit to Algiers. Uh, we had and we have uh, many coincidences, political coincidences, in our views uh, regarding some uh, international issues. Very nice. Uh, in the uh, international um, intergovernmental uh, bodies, uh, because of an alphabetic issue, we are nearby one another, Algeria, Argentina, or Argentina, Ex Algeria. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, that's, this is, a, a, I would say, a, a factual coincidence, but uh, it's not just facts that uh, um, uh, make uh, the coincidence between uh, Algeria and Argentina, uh, and as I told you, uh, many views are shared by both countries. Many Excellent. issues are. Excellent. Maybe you are going to go more in details in the political issue later. As yeah. now, I, want, I really would love to uh, move a little bit in the economic file and uh, taking into account that prior to your appointment as ambassador here to Algeria, Honorable Ambassador, you served in the Ministry of International Economic Relations and was a National Director of Investment Promotion, Strategy 2008. 11-2012. In addition, it is noteworthy that Argentina is one of the G15 and G20 major economies and Latin America's third largest. Argentina is classed as well by investors as a middle emerging country with a very high uh, development or rating of human development index. My question is, taking the Argentinian example, what are the key successes of a strong economy? Well, uh, I would say we, we have to go back to 19th century. Uh, we put uh, a lot of emphasis in education, also in uh, sharing the wealth that Argentine produce. Argentina is a middle class country. Uh, most of Argentinians uh, are middle class. For sure, we have poor people and rich people. Uh, but maybe one of the keys, what I consider the success of Argentina, is having this strong middle class and uh, this uh, accent many governments put on education. All right, very interesting. And still with the economic file, and uh, what do you think about how far are Algeria and Argentina cooperating economically? I mean, uh, how, uh, what attracts you more in the Algerian market and vice versa? I mean, what attracts the Algerian investors in the Argentinian market? Well, you, you, you use the word uh, economics in a wide uh, sense, I see. Uh, you have uh, trade relations, uh, cooperation relations, uh, and um, I would say yes, uh, it's a wide way to see the thing. So uh, uh, if we talk about uh, just trade, uh, the uh, trade between uh, Argentina and Algeria uh, has been increasing for the last 10 years. 
uh, Argentina is already the eighth, eighth uh, uh, partner of Algeria. Uh, in which sector exactly, economic uh, sector? I would say uh, in we, uh, our trade is quite uh, diverse, diversified, but for example, we uh, sell uh, here uh, a lot of uh, powder milk, um, some soy, uh, some other products. There's ma many products we, we, we trade with Algeria. We encourage Algeria also to sell us uh, oil and gas that we need. Uh, so uh, our trade is about uh, uh, 1.9 billion dollars, which is uh, more than um, the uh, half of the trade of all Latin America with Algeria. I would say that uh, Argentina is the first uh, partner of Algeria in Latin America. And if you allow me, I will also add that uh, Latin America with Argentina and Mexico, Brazil and a lot of others, our trade with Algeria is much, much more important, and these are, those are the Algerian statistics, huh? not our, uh, our yeah. this is your, your statistic, All right. um, are, are much more important than the trade of Algeria with Africa and the trade of Algeria with the Arab countries. So then you have a dimension of the, uh, the relationship between Algeria and Latin America and Argentina. All right, this triangle. All right, yeah. indeed. Ma just you have just mentioned, Mr. Ambassador, oil, and the world, well, unfortunately, is going through a uh, an econo economic crisis due to the plunging prices of oil. Yeah. I really just want to know how far did this affect the economy of Argentina in general? Well, uh, you know, you should see the the reverse of of the face because you are an oil producer, you are a gas, oil and quite important oil and gas producer. Uh, and we need energy, so we produce oil, but not in the same quantities that you, you produce. So we are uh, an importer. Yeah, in the, in when you are importing, did, they, like, did you feel any pressure or any... Um, no, no pressure, not at all. Mm -hmm. on the co no, not at all. But not talking about Algeria, um, because my question will lead to another one. Uh, how, okay? No, I mean, uh, you're talking about prices, you're talking about the price of the oil. Uh, the oil, uh, you know, a couple of years, it was a hundred, last year it was a hundred dollars the, the barrel, and now it's about 50. So in, in the case of Argentina, uh, this is good, because we, we import oil, so it's cheaper, it's good for our economy. In the case of Algeria and other oil producers, uh, it's not so good because you, you produce oil and you sell oil and the prices went, went down. So this ha has nothing to do with any pressure for anybody. It's, you know, it's the... Um, so do you think, Mr. Ambassador, that um, a such economic crisis cannot be used in the hands of stronger countries as a weapon against uh, maybe uh, small countries? Well, you see, I do not believe in com conspirative uh, theories. I believe in the market. The market, the world market regulates prices uh, and trade. So uh, for sure, uh, in some situations, some, uh, in some moments, uh, uh, the balance is uh, for in one side, sometimes in the other side. So uh, it depends how the um, countries uh, manage the situation, they get benefit or not. So but what do you think are the most successful ways in order to overcome such pressure or maybe such crisis, economically and even politically speaking? Well, you, you, so why your question? Uh, I would say, I would try to focus to the, uh, just one aspect. Uh, I would say, for example, uh, Algeria. You, you have a reserve in your bank and also you have a compensation fund for a, a crisis, when you have crisis. So you, you were very clever and you had this uh, money uh, for this kind of crisis situations, which is, which is good, it's quite clever and intelligent. So you, you thought about the future when this crisis arrived. Uh, but uh, uh, as, as I said, uh, for sure this uh, uh, economic crisis has political implications. 
But there are mainly basically uh, uh, things that are derived from uh, the, uh, the market. I mean, indeed. Uh, Indeed. Now, still with the economic file. Unfortunately, Algeria is going through some tensions in the, in the south of the country due to shale gas exploitation. Residents over there are protesting against shale gas exploitation, mm -hmm. taking into account that Argentina holds or boasts the world's second biggest shale gas reserves. Do you think that such natural resource could be harmful? All right, yeah, I see that you, you, you made a good research about my country. So you're right, we are the second. I think the first one is China or US, uh, also Canada is, is among the first. And Algeria is among the f five, uh, first five countries with uh, reserve. You know, uh, human nature is, uh, is conservative, conservative by nature. Human being is, is conservative. So anything that is new, always it look uh, with suspicious, which is normal. Uh, so, uh, uh, I think you have to prove, you, you have to prove scientifically that something new, some new technology is bad for the environment or for the human being. Uh, uh, you, you refer to the shell gas and oil gas. Uh, those are relatively new technologies. But, uh, for example, this, uh, there's a, a technology which is called, I believe, uh, fracking, uh, that is used in, uh, in the research of uh, shale gas and oil gas. And I tell you, this technology is very old. It, it was used uh, when they started with uh, the oil uh, um, exploitation and research. So there's, a, I would say, a, a, a small variation of this technology, but uh, there's nothing new about it. Uh, it doesn't come from Mars or from the Moon. I mean, of it's, course, uh, just it's uh, so. Right. Uh, uh, and also, uh, uh, when when you drill, uh, in the case of uh, the oil and shell gas, you drill about three thousand meters on the Earth, and you know that the um, the water we, we, we drink is, is far From above. Yep. So uh, I don't see how, if you drill 3,000 meters below, you can, could, could contaminate water which is far above. Also, you could use the same uh, approach when you say, well, uh, if you have uh, gas and oil exploitation, the, the ones we, we are used to, the, ones th the one that you use here in Algeria, you also have the risk of contamination. So uh, as long as you have a, a human activity, you have some risks. Uh, and as far as I know, uh, the uh, Algeria, they did not start exploding uh, oil and shale gas. They are just exploring. I think the, uh, the government decided last year they pass a, a decree, they, they pass legislation just to uh, make some uh, prospects or exploration on the possibilities uh, for exploded in the future, in the future, shell and oil gas. So I don't see what's the problem if you are exploring, you are not just taking this from, from the earth. So, and, and I tell you, there, there's, there's some other countries like Canada and US, they are doing already that, and nothing happened. And in Argentina, we also are exploring the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And there's no problem. And we, do we don't have this kind of protest in Argentina. Yes, so how... We don't course, have it. In, yeah, and uh, maybe how would you react in case there would be such protests? How would the government, well, uh, uh, you know, especially that you are not an oil producer country and you need such a reserve. Right. So how would the government react but in the face of well, such it, social Yeah, it might, depend, it, it, might dep it might depend of uh, what uh, is this reaction, this social reaction. Uh, as long as uh, uh, they have a, a fundament, they, they explain why, uh, Everything could be 
understand and we could talk and uh, try to explain those who protect to protest uh, why we are doing this and and I have some talks uh, with the uh, uh, population but uh, this uh, is what the uh, Algerian government is doing in fact all right well, which, in is, hope which is quite all right absolutely we, they have to explain absolutely that, that's, that's that's the way but I, I I mean I don't understand really frankly uh, the uh, Reaction. The reaction, because uh, they are not exploding that, not yet. They say they will do it in the future, yeah, right. in Indeed. 10 years, 20 years, we don't know. Maybe if, if this is uh, uh, really feasible and it's convenient. So it's, it's, I It think remains only a possibility so far. Yes, yes. Indeed. So I, I think it's, I, I don't really, I don't understand the protest. I don't understand because nothing is been done to to create problem with the environment Indeed. at this moment so all right so maybe my last question in the economic file do you think and still about shale gas do you think that shale gas could replace uh, uh, let's say traditional natural energies well uh, it's difficult to say that um, uh, it depends of the reserve of this gas uh, in each country uh, it depends also of the uh, Resources that you might have of oil and, and gas. Uh, also, it, it will depend in the, in the next uh, 50 or 100 years about the development on, of other technologies uh, like uh, solar energy or uh, wind energy. So, uh, this uh, we, we, we cannot say certainly at this present moment. Uh, uh, because right. in, uh, I, I'm not a magician and uh, I All don't right. think I will be. <laughs> All right, indeed. So moving on to politics okay, and yes. okay, a lawyer, yeah. a doctor in public international law from the University of Buenos Aires. Uh, I, um, I just want to speak about Algeria since it is playing a big role in the political scene recently, especially as a mediator in uh, some neighboring and uh, regional countries and Sahel regional countries in solving some of their crises, such as the Libyan one and the uh, Malian one. Uh, just last week, or maybe recently, Algeria succeeded into signing a peace agreement between the Malian fraction uh, parties. And uh, how do you qualify, or how would you, how would, how far would you agree with the uh, Algerian policies? Well, um, you see, I think nobody could oppose that somebody, in this case Algeria, uh, solve something in a pacific way. I mean, uh, that's, that's perfect, it's good. So, uh, but uh, taking uh, in a more, I would say, precise way your question, uh, you know that uh, the uh, Algerian, uh, with the aid of uh, the international community, They've been trying to mediate because Mali and the faction in the north of Mali, they asked for that to Algeria to mediate in this uh, unfortunately crisis of this neighboring country. And uh, Algeria succeeded, uh, as you said. And I was present at the ceremony the other day when they um, uh, put the initial to this uh, agreement which will be referred to uh, Mali again uh, later to review and, and continue. And, uh, and you know that the mediation is not over because um, Algeria says that they will continue to support and aid uh, in the future all the parties that are involved in this crisis. Uh, this shows that uh, first that the uh, Algerian negotiators are good and that the way to solve the crisis are not uh, uh, military, but that With if you have patience, yeah, if you have patience and peaceful dialogue, you could do it. But you need a lot of patience, which is uh, something that uh, uh, we've seen uh, in this case. And, and you just also mentioned uh, Libya. Indeed. Uh, uh, well, uh, um, maybe the case of, of Mali could serve as an example for the Libyan case, which is quite different. It's more and more complicated, you know. It's uh, your neighboring country. Uh, but uh, there's already some um, demarche 
uh, for, for that. And uh, I know that uh, next week, I believe uh, there will be different factions of uh, Libya here in, in Algiers with the United Nations, uh, trying to continue with this peace process. Uh, so that's another way uh, to, to show uh, to the world that uh, Algeria is a peaceful country and contribute uh, to the uh, peaceful solutions in other countries, neighboring countries. Indeed. Well, uh, just related to the same context and just mentioning uh, the United Nations, Argentina is actually a member of the United Nations. What is the role Argentina is playing into bringing peace, stability, freedom to uh, some countries who are still suffering from social, economic and even political unrest? All right. Uh, well, you know that uh, um, the UN, you know, f uh, many years ago, they create the uh, uh, Blue Helmet, uh, which are used in different peaceful uh, operations. Um, and uh, Argentina, we do not participate in all of them, but in some of them. Many countries uh, also participate in, in those uh, uh, forces uh, of UN, uh, which is trying to pacify uh, some uh, difficult uh, areas uh, and uh, also we have in Argentina the uh, something that we create uh, which we call it the uh, white helmet that they also sometimes they uh, provide aid uh, between the uh, I mean in the uh, framework of United Nations operation but basically we do it with other uh, countries uh, bilaterally and we do something similar to the blue helmets, but especially on in the field, not on the, on the security field, but on the uh, health and education field. Indeed. So that's the way we try to cooperate. Very nice. In the same t context, historically speaking, Algeria is in fact is a symbolic country in the fight against the colonizer, the French colonizer. And at the same time, if anyone comes at least quickly at the uh, history of uh, Argentina, nobody can go thoroughly or maybe quickly without noticing um, one of its nationals who is called Che Guevara. How far do you think that this, na this national figure, figure sorry, could be uh, inspiring? Well, uh, if you allow me, I will go a little bit back in history, 19th century because I see that uh, it's quite, uh, you know, Che Guevara, which is from the 20th century. But uh, let me use another example, which I would say is more important. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Argentina, as Algeria, they got their independence not by a gift. Nobody gave us a gift like you. You fought your independence. We did the same. Uh, but Argentina, they fought and defeat the colonial rule in the 19th century. And we also liberate other Latin American countries. Uh, and we send our army in the f when we were fighting for the independence in Argentina. And we liberate Chile, Peru, which also give the possibility to get independence uh, of Bolivia. From the north of, of this uh, South America, there was uh, a liberator, which is a Venezuelan origin, which is Bolivar. And from Argentina, it was San Martin. Both, they liberate 80% of South America. So I, I tell you this because it's not uh, quite known and I think it's uh, more important uh, in the uh, cause of the fight of independence. Indeed. Well, I'm not going to be a feminist, but <laughs> I really would like to include at least the question about women in our uh, interview. Well, the International Women's Day is at the doors and historically as well speaking, the Algerian women fought hand in hand with Algerian men and uh, into getting their in, uh, the independence and still they are like working in the field. They are present in the political scene as ministers, as uh, parliament uh, members and so on. The Argentinian women were also present 
in its history, uh, starting maybe if you date back to uh, the First Lady Eva Persson, to the current president of the country, Cristina Fernandez Kirchner, who has been uh, always praised for her dearness in um, different conferences, in, in her speeches. How do you qualify the presence of women in the political scene? Well, I think it's very good. I think there's a good step in the right direction. Uh, and not just in the political field, in, uh, in the universities, in justice, everywhere. Uh, here in Algeria, also in Argentina, you have the women, they are occupying quite important places and, uh, and posts, and they are doing pretty well. So uh, I, I think it's quite normal, it's, it's okay. It's, uh, I mean, it's something that uh, for, for us is quite natural. I mean, it's nothing new. Um, it's good. As long as it doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. What it matters is, do you do things right? Very nice. It That's it, in a very simple word. So how, please, in 2000, uh, maybe digging a little bit in the uh, Argentinian politics, in 2001, Argentina, uh, the country, has gone through a political crisis yeah. and the government witnessed at least four presidents. How did this crisis affect or maybe how did it uh, help into bringing the uh, current, the present, uh, strong Argentinian government. All right. Well, uh, basically, it was uh, an economic crisis. Uh, it had not uh, quite, I would say, political consequences. It was. It was not a, a political fight. It was an economic crisis. Uh, it was uh, one of the uh, greatest uh, economic crises we had. But uh, uh, I would say, always, we joke in Argentina. We are, in a way, a magic country. We could go down in two minutes, and we could go up into two minutes. Absolutely. So in a, a just this determination. Yeah, and we have yeah. As I said, you uh, at the beginning, when you have a people which is educated, and you have the resources. Fortunately, is the case of Argentina, you could uh, succeed. So in a couple of years, we came back, and uh, we had. Uh, we also say that uh, the uh, two years after this crisis, we had the. Uh, our um, economy was uh, improving like the Chinese. So we had a couple of years uh, with a good uh, production. And uh, well. Interesting indeed. Far now from politics. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, Argentina is actually a, a Spanish speaking country. And I really would like to know about the presence of this language among the Algerian community uh, when you speak about foreign languages along with French, which is quite dominant, in addition to English, which is making uh, its way among the Algerian, especially the upcoming generation. What is its place? What is its future? Of the language? Of the language of Spanish. Well, um, you just mentioned English, and if you take uh, out Chinese Mandarin, I'm not sure they, they, it's been spoken by, by more than a thousand million uh, Chinese. The second language in the world is Spanish. All right. So that gives you an idea. <laughs> an already uh, answer. Yeah, about okay. the future. <laughs> All right. So uh, and also the uh, the importance of the uh, Spanish-speaking countries in the trade uh, is very important. You know, uh, trade, economics, and and, and the commerce uh, it's trade. This make makes the world move. Okay, you could say whatever you like, but I like a lot uh, uh, economic history. And I read a lot about that. And the more I read, the more I am convinced that uh, even if you go to the Roman times, uh, if you look there, you, you have the key of success or defeat of a country. So uh, I said uh, Spain is quite an important country, and they speak Spanish. Uh, we are Latin American, apart from Brazil, they speak Portuguese. We speak Spanish, and uh, we are quite important countries uh, talking about economics and trade. So that gives you a projection Absolutely. in the world.
Indeed. Did you learn some Arabic words during your stay here in Algeria? Uh, just a little bit. Uh, for example? Uh, for example, uh, Saha. That's all. <laughs> for <laughs> <Okay>. example. <laughs> for example. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, a question before we finish. Are there any future cooperation between Algeria and Argentina? Well, actually, there's already a lot of cooperation. Uh, it's been a lot of cooperation in many fields, but I would say the last um, five years, six years, there's a lot of uh, technicians and engineers uh, and doctors that come from Argentina and from Algeria to Argentina in fields like uh, health, communication, um, uh, administration, uh, what else, uh, agriculture, uh, nuclear you know here you mm -hmm. have a uh, the uh, the nuclear uh, which Project. is uh, uh, yeah oh th there's a nuclear reactor here that was built in the 80s by argentina right. yes so <laughs> <laughs> we've got already the answer <laughs> all right indeed now um well i would like to uh end this di uh, interview with a very light question since Algerians are fans, most of Algerians are fans of the Argentinian football players, Messi and Diego Ronaldo, who is your favorite football player, maybe in general, maybe a particular uh, Algerian one? Well, uh, um, I, I wouldn't give you a name. Mm -hmm. I like those players, no matter which country, when they play well. All right. So if he plays well, it's okay. Uh, I know that Messi, he plays pretty well. Sometimes he's not going well, but that's normal. He's human. All you right. cannot ask him to play pretty well, always. All right. So, yeah, he's nice man. All right. Thank you so much. And Please. with this light answer, we, our interview has drawn to a close. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador Ernesto Santiago Martinez Gondra, for honoring us with such an interview. Thank you so much, dear audience, for following us on Zay News. Cameras. Bye-bye.